Hello and welcome to the New City Church podcast. I'm Benjamin Komanopoli Jr., pastor of New City Church Hyderabad. This is where you will hear messages preached at our church. It's my prayer that the incorruptible seed of God's Word will strengthen you, build you, and help you receive the abundant life that Jesus came to give you. Enjoy the Word and be blessed. So when I saw, and I want to talk about knowing God, it's not about just knowing theoretically. But the Bible says you know your God with experience. I want all of the members here by the end of this year that you will experience God. You will be able to tell about your God through your experiences. Amen. So I hope everybody who walked into this church this morning know that a God exists. At least we are on the same page. Any atheist, we will talk later. So I hope you are on the same page that there is a God that is existing who has created us and who is here this morning. But when you read this Bible, see this Bible has been written by 40 different authors over a period of 1500 years in different places, in different parts of the world and uh, different people wrote and they wrote different things in the Bible. And one thing, one revelation, what everybody is agreeing upon in this Bible. And that is what I want to talk about that God this morning is God is good. God is good. If you read Psalms, if you read anywhere, the uh, authors always declare that God is good. So you might say, I know this very well. God is good. But you may know. Theoretically, you may have read the scriptures that this God is good. You might have listened to the scriptures that I'm going to talk uh, many more times than before uh, and than ever before. But this morning, I am praying that you will no longer just read your Bible. You will no longer just hear my voice, but you will experience the goodness of God. The psalmist says, oh, I have tasted and seen the Lord is good. Tell somebody I have come to taste this morning. So a God is not only an embodiment of goodness, but he is obsessed with good. If you open your Bible, Genesis chapter 1, the first page in the creation, he says, on the first day, he created everything and he said it is good. Second day, he created everything and he said it is first service, the most energetic group of New City Church. Third day, he said it is fourth day, he said it is good. Fifth day, he said it is Sixth day, not so good. He says, Adam, come here. This is good, not good. Let me put you to sleep. He takes the rib from his side. He makes a woman. He joins with Adam and he says, now it is good. So he is only thinking about good. He's a good God. And when he does something, he's doing good. Amen. When he opens a door, he is doing? When he closes the door, he's doing? When he says yes, he's doing. When he's saying no. When you enter the office, he's saying it is good. When you are denied by the office, he's saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope you are not confessing a contradiction. <laughs> Some of you might be thinking, what good <laughs> from morning yesterday. All things are happening and now I have to come and say God is good. Because everybody is saying, you might be saying, but how many of us got frustrated? How many of you thought God is not any more good in my life? You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to tell anybody. But just um, recollect the times you thought God was not good in your life. You Maybe you not have uttered from your mouth, but there was a thinking in your head about this God that he's not doing good. But Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, he will work together all things for your good. He works all things for your good. So nothing that happens in the life of a believer, there's nothing that happens in the life of a believer that will not end up in a testimony. Why? Because he's putting all things together for your good. What is a testimony? Testimony is a baby of test. <laughs> What are miracles? Miracles are baby of impossibilities. Because you had that impossibility, you received that miracle. Because you had a test in your life, you had a testimony in your life. 
So anything the enemy is trying to do, anything that is happening in your life, you have to remember there is a God who is working all things together for your good, including your afflictions and sufferings. Psalm 119.71, it says, my suffering was good for me. So at that point, you may not understand what is good in this, but there is a God who is trying to bring out the good even out of that suffering and afflictions. Amen. So bigger the problem, bigger the testimony. Hallelujah. See in Luke chapter 5, you see Peter, he toiled all night, but after a great failure, he came into contact with his destiny. Amen. So I don't know where you are this morning. But get ready. God is working all things for your good. For your good. Hallelujah. So only. See many times. When you think about your life. I want you to start thinking in a very different perspective this morning. So God created people. And he said it is good. He said when he's creating you. He says I have knitted you. In a secret place. So when he's trying to put things together, he know what he's putting in that person. James chapter 117 says, everything that comes from above is good and perfect. It's perfect. So when a baby is born, when the baby is sent or when a person is sent to this earth from heaven, he's saying it is perfect. Maybe your relatives did not agree. They might have said, oh, if the nose was a bit sharp, it would have been good. Not so perfect. If he did not get the color of his dad, he would have been good. If the hair was little thick and long, it was good. But the Bible is saying everything that is coming from above is good and perfect. Tell your neighbor, I am perfect. (laughs) Hallelujah. So when God puts you in everything inside of you, he knows what he's putting together. And when he's making somebody in the heaven, it's not like there is a manufacturing that is going on like a carbon copies, one human, two human. No, 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 no. He says, I'm making everybody unique. I'm making everybody different. And everybody has a something good inside of them. Jeremiah 29, 11 says that I have good plans for you. Not to destroy you, but for a good future and good hope. So... If we go to heaven, maybe God, see, not only when he was creating Adam, he took so much time. But when he was creating us also, he did take so much time. Because many of the times we think God created Adam with his own hands. After that, it was just carbon copy. There's a Xerox machine and all the human beings are coming down. No, every person, he takes time to create you. He's knitting you. He's saying, before your mother knows about you, I have put you in her womb. So there is a combination which is very unique. What the other person did not have is on the inside of you. So for example, maybe when he was creating me, he's saying, okay, I'm creating this um, woman named Arpita. She will be born in Hyderabad. She'll be married to a pastor. She will have three kids. Later on, she'll become a preacher. Then she's going to preach to the world and change this generation. Okay. Amen. So let's say he was creating Steve. I said, Steve is created in such a way that he's born in a pastor's family, but he will become a worship leader. He will connect to the gospel. Not only he will preach the gospel, but he will become an excellent employee. From there, he will be uh, be going to a place of CEO where he will influence the business world. And this is his story. So you might, it might look like Steve and I are in the same church on the same stage. But my story is different. His story is different. But remember, the end is goodness. The end is great plan. Because he's a good God. So in each one of you, he created in that unique way. There is no similar combination. See, how many of you know that we play a game? They put all the similar images and they say, find which is different. But in heaven, it is, diff- it is uh, reverse. Everything will be different. He'll say, find what is similar. Because you can't find a similar person having the same great calling, which is upon you, which is upon your life. So your neighbor might be sitting beside you, but he's not like you. Tell your neighbor, I'm not like you. I am different. Hallelujah. So he has created us different and unique. And when he was creating you itself, he said, I have a plan for this person. I have a plan for this person, Jeremiah 29, 11. So that plan is very unique. 
He has a good plan. Let us see from the life of Moses this morning. Exodus chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. Moses was born in a time where his entire nation was under persecution. The Egyptians were tormenting his people like anything. They were slaves. They did not have their own rights. Not only that, but they were not even treated as human beings. You know, they were called as Pharaoh's properties. So that was the time when Moses was coming to this earth. And Moses, if you have read Bible also, if you have not read also, you know, he has been a great leader. So this great leader had to be born in a great family, in a great time, in a great generation. That's what humanly we think. But God is sending him to a place where there is persecution, where there is no chance a baby can be alive. In fact, when Moses was coming to this earth, there was an order by the king that day that every Hebrew boy have to be killed. Because this uh, nation was increasing, the laborers were increasing, the slaves were increasing and the, the Egyptians were decreasing in number. So the Pharaoh did not want the males to increase in that land because one day when they become so strong that the slaves might come against them and take over their throne. So he thought of killing every single child. But God has a plan. Exodus chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. About this time, a man and woman from tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of Nile River. The baby sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. So there was no chance Moses could survive. The maximum their parents could do, they did. And the sister is waiting. If the crocodile will come and eat him or if the Egyptians will find him, I don't know what is going to happen. But they didn't, I think the parents didn't want the child to be killed in front of their eyes. So Jesus left on the water. But the parents must have left him. Everybody must have left him. But God did not leave him. The plan of God did not leave him. The promise of God did not leave him. Because when he was sending Moses, God knew the plan for Moses' life is that he has to deliver the Israelites from this nation. So the enemy might do anything, but it cannot touch Moses because the plan of God is preserving Moses until the plan gets fulfilled in his life. Amen. So all of us, we have a plan. The God has a plan, a unique plan upon our life. Until you see the plan manifest in your life, you are not going to die. Amen. See Psalm chapter 105, okay, 105 Psalm chapter 14, verse 14 and 15. He gave a promise to Abraham. He says, because of you and your descendants, I'm going to bless nations. And after you, wherever the nation, from nation to nation, kingdom to kingdom, wherever these children will go, I will stand for them. He says, I will reprove kings for their sake. Verse 15. He says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. In the NLT, he says, touch not my chosen one, because God has a plan for Moses. He's saying nobody can touch the person whom I have chosen. Amen. So this morning, I want to encourage you once again, if you have been dealing with anything, you have to understand until the plan of God is fulfilled in your life, nobody can touch you. No demon in hell, no sickness, no virus, nothing can touch you, but you will go and fulfill the plan of God for your life. Somebody say, I cannot die. <laughs> see, Jesus also came with a plan and purpose. And how many of you know Jesus did not die until everything was finished? You know, when he died, when he went to the cross and said, it is finished. It is finished. Until then, nobody could kill Jesus. In fact, he says, nobody can take my life. I had to lay it down. I gave it. I gave it. And as a believer who has been given the same position with Jesus Christ is the same promise for us. Until you say, I am finished, it is finished in my life. Nobody can take your life from you until you lay it down. 
when you hear a sermon like this, you know what should be your prayer? I'm not going to die. I'm going to live long and satisfied life. I'm going to declare the works of God. Because God is very jealous God. He says, see this Moses when I'm created, I have put something on his life. And he cannot die. If he dies, how am I going to fulfill the things? What I wanted to do through his life. So he will fight the enemy. He will fight the kings. He will fight the people. But he will make sure all his plans will become true in your life. Hallelujah. Verse, okay, well, let's go to Psalm 105 verse. Um, okay, let's okay, let me jump to Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. Verse 1 to 3. Here we see God is speaking a promise on a barren woman. She says, you know, she's a barren woman. That means no children. But he's saying, enlarge the place of thy tent. Let them stretch forth the curtains of thy inhabitation. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right and the left. And seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. So he can bring something out of nothing. It might look barren, but when, once God speaks a promise over you, once the word of God is spoken over your life, impossibilities will become possible. And till that impossibility will become possible in your life, God is working all the time because he has a good plan for you. That is what we see in the life of Moses as well. And now when I say that he has a good plan for you and you're going in that process doesn't mean that nothing is going to happen in the process. Uh, jump to Isaiah 54 verse 11. He says, the afflictions will come. In this process, the afflictions will come. For the sake of time, jump to verse 17. He says, you will be afflicted, you will be tossed, but no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper what is preserving you the promise of God is preserving you the plan of God is preserving you so when you enter this new covenant when you join with Christ he's saying you have entered a better covenant with better promises so every new covenant believer you have a promise from God you have a plan from God and until that promise manifests, until that plans come to pass, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But the second part of the verse, you have to do. He says, every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, I shall condemn. You shall condemn. In this process, if the devil is saying you cannot live, oh, God must have said a lot of things. They must have released a lot of promise. But just look at those reports. You're going to die in one year. You shall condemn. I will not die, but I will live a long life and declare the goodness of God. There was a great woman of God called Maria Woodworth Etter. She's called the grandmother of word of faith or the holy uh, Pentecostal moment. She lived in the early 1900s. She started preaching about the Holy Spirit in 1900s, early 1900s, and nobody was interested. And everybody thought that she is a fake preacher. And they did not believe in Holy Spirit. They did not believe in the miracles that were happening in front of their eyes. She was so powerful. Being a woman at that time of the era, she would conduct meetings which would go from seven weeks to seven months long. Tents were there all over. People were coming from different places. Uh, tents were being filled with people. Miracles were happening. Uh, the news was spreading. There was no media, but the news was spreading. In those times, imagine people have to come and listen to a woman preacher who is preaching about the Holy Spirit. What would draw them to those tents? And when this was happening, the religious leaders get super mad. And they said, we have to do something about this woman. So they would try their best. Sometimes they would go and cut the ropes of their tents so that the entire tent will fall and it will become very uncomfortable and people will leave. And uh, as they were doing these persecutions, the church was only expanding and the numbers were expanding. So there was one uh, pastor who was a religious leader. He could not take her at all. So he thinks about something and he says, okay, he goes to... 
what do you call this mental hospitals he brings insane people means mental crack people and releases them into the crowd to tell that that this holy spirit is not true and they are only insane people what she is doing is not from god and what she is doing is not correct so in that entire crowd this insane people will get mixed up one side people are speaking in tongues one side insane people will come and start doing um, mad things so the faith of the people will be starting to shake and she'll be like what is happening and immediately she spots this man who is standing there and she he comes to her and when she's standing on the stage he comes to her and says maria just stop all of this look what is happening you better leave our city before you are completely ashamed before you are completely put to shame so maria gets very irritated at that point and she says okay listen to me very carefully what you're doing is not right and the judgment of god will come upon you she she waits patiently and finally when it gets to the point where it is uncontrollable in the crowd she releases this word over him and guess what happens the moment he tries to say something to him her again his tongue swells up it becomes so thick and it comes out so much that his tongue will be touching the chin and he runs away from there not understanding what is happening he goes and he gets um, get diagnosed or he want to get treated but nobody understand what's happening his tongue remains like that and he was not able to eat he was not able to speak he was not able to do anything it became so uncom uncomfortable then the people around him will start saying i think you did something wrong you just go and apologize to her but two or three days he will just stay in the same stubbornness and says i am not going to do that i think after three days the tongue is not coming back no food hunger he comes back to her and standing in the same tent in front of her with that tongue swollen he would try to tell her i am sorry for what i did the moment that whisper comes out of his mouth his tongue shrinks back to normal and he will become normal in front of eyes of people who are watching touch not the anointed touch not the chosen i will fight with kings i'll fight with demons i will fight but i will make sure my plans are good plans and until those plans will get fulfilled in your life i'm not going to leave you because i'm a good god and i have a good plan when all this is happening what you have to understand is when the destruction is coming it is not from god i don't have a plan to destroy you when moses was thrown into the water god was not thinking to kill him the devil was trying to kill him he made sure even in that water he landed safely into the hands of pharaoh's daughter the same person who was trying to kill him will become the same person who will raise him in his house he has a good plan many times we conf we get confused is it from god or is it from devil why is this happening in my life if god is there maybe you did not ask this question maybe you must have heard heard people asking you this question so you need to understand there is a god who is jealous for you who is fighting for you who is working behind the scenes to make sure all things are coming together so that the plan that he has placed on the inside of you when you are formed in your mother's womb has to be fulfilled Amen. It's very hard to still believe this God, right? Let me go further. <laughs> the God has a plan, everything is fine, but I don't see that plan is coming to fulfill because we have never thought about a God who is always working for our good. You will not experience this goodness only for one reason, because you're because of your ignorance. Hosea says, "My people will perish because they are they are not having the knowledge of this God." because they don't know their god because they don't understand there is a god who is always in their back maybe you cannot see but he is always watching you he is seeing you whether you are in the nile river whether you are in the basket whether you are in the parents hands whether you are left alone whether you are depressed wherever you are the plan of god is making sure you are traveling in the right path wherever you are missing he is trying to put you back in the track hallelujah second thing so he has a good plan for you and then he's good all the time 
He's good all the time. So when you look at Moses' life, God has preserved him because he has a plan for his life. He takes him to the palace. He's raising him as a leader. But in those moments, Moses doesn't understand God. That's why later on when he meets God, he says, what you want, Moses? He says, God, I want to know your ways, how you function. So without even considering God, he goes and kills an Egyptian. And from there, he runs away. So it looked like he's going towards his destiny. It looks like all things are working together. But suddenly he takes this decision. The person who had to become the deliverer of this nation has become a murderer. Now he runs away from that place in guilt, in condemnation, in fear. The person who had to become a leader has gone into wilderness. Nobody talks about him. Nobody knows what is happening with him. Nobody even inquires about it. For 40 years, everything is dead silent. He just runs away to some place. He hides there. He gets married. He becomes a shepherd. What do you think God's plan was upon his life? To become a shepherd? To deliver a nation, not a flock of sheep. To lead a nation. To lead his people. But God is good all the times. He did not say, Moses... You left me. You ran away. You are not even praying to me. I'm not going to come to you. He did not say that. Exodus chapter 3 verse 4. God meets Moses when he was at his lowest. He was at his lowest. He's dealing with guilt. He has given up on his dreams. He's not doing what he was supposed to do. But here... Verse, uh, can we read from verse, verse 3? And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great side, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him. Somebody say, God called. God calls Moses, Moses. The God who created, the God who deserves all the praise and worship, the God who can do anything in a second he comes down for Moses he finds him in the wilderness he, he starts speaking to him and says Moses Moses you might have forgot the plan that was upon your life but I did not forget I have a good plan for you not to destroy you but to build you back again to put you back into the place where I have called you so this time I'm going to take you to the same place where you have ran away from verse 12 says I will be with you can you understand can you how good is this God now you ran away I'm leaving you no 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 you forgot but I did not you left me but I will not leave you you have sinned. You are dealing with guilt and condemnation. I will deal with you. I'll make you the leader that you have to be. But I cannot speak. I will give you Aaron. But I, I don't know what's your name. My name is Yahweh. I will be with you. I will perform miracles for you. Because he's a God who is good all the times. He's good in wilderness. He's good in your mistakes. He's good when you are deeply stuck in your sin. He's good when you're dealing with condemnation, when you're dealing with good, with, with guilt. He's a good God. He's always good. We see that in the life of Peter. Peter went with Jesus all the three and a half years. He has received great promise upon his life. None of the disciples received what Peter received. He says, upon you, I shall build my church. So when Jesus leaves this earth, who is the person that has to stand upon whom God is going to build the church? Peter. God has a plan for Peter. And it is not to harm him. It is not to destroy him. Not, but to make him prosperous and great. After seeing all of the miracles. After receiving the plan. After receiving the promises. Once Jesus lives. Once he dies on the cross. Uh, if you can put the words. John chapter 21 verse 3. He says, I go fishing. The point where Jesus picked him was when he was fishing. He says, you should not fish. I'm going to take you to do something else. 
but he runs back to the same thing. But Jesus shows up again. Somebody say again. God is good all the times. He comes there. He sees Peter. You remember what he does to Peter on the first time he saw, sees him? You're failing. I am there. Put it on the right side. Again he comes. Again he finds him at the same failure spot. He says, Peter, put your red nets on the right side side i am good all the time and this time also peter has the same result of 153 large fish he experienced the boat sinking net breaking but he forgot he ran away but god is good all the times he comes back and he gives him the same result he says peter you need to understand do you love me i'm a good god i have a good plan for you do you trust me that i'm going to build my church on you and from there, he puts him back into the plan where he wants to build his church. And upon that rock, this morning where we are standing upon him, the church was built. The nations shake. He, he shake the nations. He changed the world. He changed the entire history. And that is what happened with Moses. He took Moses from the burning bush, from the wilderness for 40 years. I don't know what happened to Moses, in which shape he was, how he was looking he, I am sure he must be not looking like a person who could enter the courts of Pharaoh. But he goes to courts of Pharaoh. Pharaoh in those days was the uh, strongest nation. Egypt was one of the strongest nation on the face of earth. They had chariots. They had great uh, army. What nobody could defeat. And that's why Pharaoh was so proud and stubborn. Because of the chariots and because of the men he had. Not only that. But Pharaoh himself was considered as God. So Moses is put back into the place where he's going to stand in front of the strongest or one of the mightiest man on this planet. But this time, he's going with God. I will be with you. All these days, Pharaoh decreed something and it was established in Egypt. But now, I make you God to Pharaoh and you shall decree and that will happen in Egypt. See from where God picked him where he left everything, where he lost his speech, he's stammering, maybe speaking to the spe sheep, he's, he learned the sheep language, <laughs> nothing to speak with sheep. He says, no problem. God is good all the time. I don't know what phase of your life you are, but you have to understand, when you were born, God put you in this planet with a plan, which is very unique. Maybe you have experienced the goodness of God for a while and then after you did not feel like nothing is working, you, you went back to the same point again, back to square one. But God is good all the time. From there, he wants to deal with you because the plan that he's on side of you will not fail. Because he did not create you as a failure. The Bible says you are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. And finally, not only he has a good plan, not only he is good all the time, he can turn things for your good. He can turn things for your good. Egyptians were in slavery for 400 years. 400 years. They, I don't know what they said to God all those days. They might have cursed him. They might have thought it is not a good God. But God is sending Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 20, 21. As I said, they had a hard time in Egypt because they were living days of hell on earth. They were living days of hell on earth. Verse 20, he says, Moses, now I'm going to turn around the situation for my nation. Now, write this on your doorpost of your house and your gate so that as long as the sky remains above the earth, you and your children may flourish in the land swore to given to your ancestors. Verse 21, verse 22. Verse 22. Be careful to obey all commands I am giving you. Show love to the Lord your God by walking in the ways and holding tightly to him. Uh, next verse. Next verse. Verse 24. Somebody find this for me. He says, you will have the days of heaven on earth. Deuteronomy chapter 11.
Sorry? 21, yeah. Put in KJV. So God is getting ready to turn around the situation. Those who are going through hell on the earth, he's saying, from now onwards, you will enjoy the days of heaven on earth. Somebody said days of heaven on earth. I don't know what is happening in your life, but God's plan is to give you days of heaven on earth. Yeah. So he says, as the days of heaven upon the earth, not when you die and go to heaven. You're going to experience the days of heaven upon the earth earth hallelujah see god when the devil says certain things you should not today is the day you're putting the mute button to devil in your life if he says your good days are over you cannot see anything good how many days you will go to church how many days you're going there get ready the time to turn things around has come amen the goodness god did not say surely hell and demons will follow all your life he said surely goodness and mercy shall follow my life Yes, they were in a certain land which was like hell. Look how was Egypt. Go to verse 8, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 8. In Egypt, they had to irrigate the land by their foot. So what happened was when they were trying to irrigate the land, the slaves were never given any sharp items because if they put all the sharp items together, they might become a weapon and they might kill Pharaoh. So if they have to dig wells or you have to dug something for irrigation, they had to use their feet. So verse 9, read from verse 9. If you obey, you will enjoy a long life in the land. The Lord swore to give you your ancestors and to you their descendants. A land flowing with milk and honey. Verse 10. For the land you are about to enter and take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you came. Where you planted your seed and made irrigation ditches with your foot as in a vegetable garden. Verse 11. The land you will soon take over is a land of hills and valley with plenty of rain. And the land... The Lord, your God, cares for you. He watches over you through every season of the year. So you were saved from the kingdom of darkness to kingdom of light, not to live the same way. The land you came from is not going to be the same land you will be entering. It is going to be completely different. All these days you toiled, but now the water is just going to flow. The milk is just going to flow. The honey is going to just flow. All you have to do is just walk by faith. So God saved you and made you a new creation. Where you are going is not going to be like the life you lived as a sinner. He wants to turn things around. One of the things he saved you is from the kingdom of darkness to kingdom of light. So when you're going to walk in the goodness of God, the same thing what he did in Egypt, the slaves became a nation. The people who were poor came out wealthy. The people who had to dig, now everything is just flowing into their life. Psalm 127, 1 says, this time I am going to build, unless God builds, nobody can save that nation or save that city. Now, this new life, I am going to build you and I have a good life. And this time, I'm not only going to break the yoke, I'm not only going to break the yoke of bondage, but I will give you Canaan written on, your name written on Canaan. So this time when you're coming out, uh, the promises of God are waiting because he has a good plan. He's good all the time and he's turning everything for your good. Come on, put your hands together for this good God. God will take you there. God is a God of increase. This God doesn't know how to go backwards. This God doesn't know to stay settled in one place. This God only knows to multiply, increase, and to make your days shine brighter and brighter. This God only knows to make you progressive, to increase. Hallelujah. And when he speaks about to these people, Moses, when he comes and talks to his people about this, they could not believe this God. They could not believe this God. And same thing is happening with the believers of this church. I mean, church, uh, the body of Christ. But God is saying in 2 Chronicles verse 16 and 9, my eyes are going to and fro to search for somebody who can actually believe that I am a good God, who can trust my plan with their life, who knows that I am good in all the times. So I can turn around those things for them so that I can show strong in their life. And the same God is here this morning. 
His eyes are going to and fro. I might be looking at your faces, but he's looking at your thoughts and your heart. Whatever is happening in your life this morning, if you believe, God, you have sent me to this earth having a good plan for my life. Yes, I have messed up. Yes, I have did something wrong. But you are a good God who are going to do things good for my life. You are good all the time. And I am believing that today is the day for turn around in my life. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day I'm going to experience the goodness of God like never before. Let the mockers mock God. Let them do their job. But let the believers, you do your job. Believe in the goodness of God. Believe the God who is walking with you. Believe in the God who is for you and not against you. Believe that God is ordaining your steps towards goodness. There is a person. God might be waiting. Since 10 years I'm waiting. I want to make sure that this plan will pro make, be prosperous in your life. I want to make sure the plan that upon your life is not for yourself. I will have a plan that will shake this nation. And I'm waiting upon that man since 10 years. I'm here. There is a burning bush. God has showed you so many times, but you never paid attention to that. Because at the time of burning bush, we see something happen. When the burning bush was there, when the bush was burning, God spoke to Moses. But before that, Moses had to turn and see something was happening there. We got so busy with everything, we don't have time to turn to God. Unless you turn and go there, he cannot speak to you. Yes, God is good. He wants to do great things. He has placed so many people in your life, so many opportunities in your life, so many signs in your life to show you once again the plan that I have, the place where I want to take you. I want to talk to you, but we did not pay attention to that. But the same God is here this morning. He is good all the times. I don't know how many times he tried to talk to you. Maybe you did not listen, but today... If you place in your faith, believing that God is here, he's ready to talk to me. He's going to take me to the place where I have to be. He has a plan for my life, which is a good plan. And I am going to shake this nation. The plan is for me to do great things for God in my lifetime. The plan is that I will impact my generations. He wants to talk to you this morning. He says, oh, who wants so much? I want what I want, I want to go. Still he's going to do. You're sick, he wants to heal you. You're having lack, he wants to give you an abundant life. You're depressed, he wants to lift you. You're sad, he wants to give you happiness. If you have come weeping, he wants to send you dancing. If you're mourning, he wants to give you joy. He is a good God, he's good all the times and he's going to turn around things this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's working for you. He's working for you. He's working for you. He's not against you. I want to repeat this again and again. He is for you and he's not against you. The only thing this God can think for you is good. Is good. He cannot think anything else because that is his nature. That is his nature. Every time you come on a Sunday morning, it's like a burning bush. The Lord is standing here. Not once. Moses, Moses. This time, I want to come with you. I want to make you a God to Egypt. The worship team can come on the stage. We're going to worship God for a couple of minutes. It's, I have spoken my sermon. The, what God wants me to tell to you. But I believe there is much more the Holy Spirit God wants to tell you this morning. There is so much good in store for us. There are good days ahead of you. Your good days are not behind you, but your good days are before you. Your good years are waiting for you. Moses has wasted 40 years. The God who was with him from day one. He made sure he did not die. He made sure he did not sink in the river. He made sure he was not touched in Pharaoh's palace. He made sure when he ran away, he did not die in wilderness, but he stayed there. Let's all stand to our feet. In the next few minutes, study your life. I want everybody to close your eyes. Where you were born, what happened to you all these days, and in the midst of all that, if you can see how God was working in your life to connect you to God, to connect you to the gospel, to connect you to the truth, to connect you to his plans, to connect you to his purposes. He wants to take you there.
maybe if you are not there he is ready to turn around things this morning this morning if he could make a shepherd boy the leader of a nation if he could teach moses he never did a miracle in his life all the time he knew the rod was only to use it for the sheep but the same rod he used for the glory of god till today people cannot deny the miracles that went forth with the rod of moses he is going to use what is in your hand you don't have to work much you don't have to do anything for this sermon there is only one response faith if you want to walk like moses if you want to enjoy the goodness of god the only response is faith and faith says you need to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth so believe in your heart that god is good full stop god is good second thing confess with your mouth god is good when you are sick god is good when the doors closed god is good when troubles come god is good when storm come god is good because in those moments he is working things together for your good for your good i want you to get disconnected from everything else you don't get this opportunity every week every day but there is one opportunity if moses missed that burning bush that day maybe he would have not heard the voice of god again i don't know but i believe today is the day of encounter for somebody in this crowd because god wants you to put you back in his plans he's thinking to do something good in your life and your steps towards the altar only shows your faith faith has an action faith always responds to the goodness of god you have heard the goodness of god but you have to respond by faith that's why the bible says moses is the most faithful in my house is the most faithful that means he was willing and he was obedient if you want to experience the goodness of god respond by faith i'm not going to lay hands on anybody this is your moment with god you talk to god god i believe that you have a plan for me not this plan what i am here because his plans are great his plans are great when you walk on when you walk in his plans people will know about it your community will know about it this nation will know about it if your name is not heard by this nation that means you are not walking in his plan don't ever think i am small i cannot do anything the only thing that is keeping you from the plan of god is your unwillingness to walk in the plan of god yes moses had fear how can i go in front of pharaoh what will i tell what will the people think about me what if the miracle doesn't happen what if i go there and people just laugh at me put all your excuses aside because the thing that is going to happen in your life is not in your own strength it's because this good god has a good plan for you and is good all the times and he wants to turn around things for your good so let's all lift our hands worship god ask him to show your plan god am i in your plan did i am i in the wilderness did i run away from you am i too far there's no situation too far for god that he cannot put you back into track there is no sin that will surprise god oh i did something you did not something new what nobody did on this earth i murdered a person god i killed an egyptian do you think i can be a leader again oh yes i'm a good god i'm a good god so today be intentional god is here to encounter you he wants to speak to you i declare that every spiritual eye has been opened up in this place every spiritual ear has been opened to hear the voice of the holy ghost the voice of the holy ghost it might be a simple sermon it might be a simple line god is good which you have been telling all these days but are you walking in the good plan of god 
did you experience do you know this good god not because you read the bible not because you know the scriptures by heart but did you experience the good god as i said we are going out tasting saying this god is good this god is good your god is good the place where you are standing is holy moses i am here the god almighty is here is the same god who is speaking to us this morning the place you are standing is a holy place god is standing here to speak to us and let's worship him and get ready to hear from that god as we stand in the holy ground as we are speaking to god god you spoke to moses at the burning bush you spoke to a murderer you spoke to the person who ran away from your plans but still you are good all the times now i want to hear you if you could sp speak to moses you can speak to me if you could make him a great person is the same god who has put the great plan in moses is standing here it might be a burning bush for him but for you today this morning is the presence of god god is here to manifest himself ask your desires ask him to do his will in your life let his will manifest in your life come on declare that as we sing this song the god of creation who could come down for moses is the same god who has come down to speak to you this morning call upon the lord is going to answer you he's ready to manifest you just worship him you need to seek him you need to ask him you need to knock the door from your side faith has to be the response he's ready to to manifest what he done in the life of moses is going to do for you you have to just refuse for smaller plans i'm not going to settle for less i want to walk in the plans of god i want people to talk about me about the goodness of god my testimony has to be a testimony for generation this nation has to talk to me and the history has to talk about me somebody ask about it god wants to do something in india the revival has to come to india is waiting upon somebody since a long time you have been in the wilderness i don't know 5 years 10 years 15 years but god has placed a great plan on the inside of you if one person can see that like moses he can deliver the entire nation i want a believer from new city church you be the one person say i will be the one person lord i am faithful i want you to use me there's no greater riches moses reproached the riches of the pharaoh the riches of egypt it doesn't matter i was in the palace i have tasted the riches i went with the pharaoh chariots but i don't want that i want the will of god to be manifested i want the will of god to be manifested rasakara ba 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 le mara so koro ba 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 re sa ka ra ba 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 Sokoro bandare re ra bandare Jehovah Rapha thank you for manifesting your healing in the bodies of your people lord we thank you lord for opening doors for breakthroughs lord we declare that your will be done in their lives lord every great plan that you have placed on the inside of them lord they will see the manifestation lord we will not die without the plan of god being manifested in my life lord i will not die early i will my children will not die early we are going to flourish we are going to experience the days of heaven on earth lord i declare from today onwards lord a turn around in the lives of this people a good god to whom we have worshiped to whom we have called upon to whom we have seek lord we thank you the time for turn over has come upon your believers lord we thank you that you are elevating them to places they will be heads and not tails lord they will be influential people lord they will take over businesses lord they will take over the position of influence for your glory alone wherever you have placed them lord we thank you that you have a great plan for them today who have believed uh, my god is good who is still working on the plan for my life uh, who did not give up on me who is here for me and not against me lord i declare be it according to them according to their faith lord as their mouth has confessed uh, that this lord is good and i will experience only goodness in my life i declare sure only goodness and mercy will follow all through their life lord we speak a blessing upon everybody who has come this morning we thank you lord for the word that you have been released we are going out with confidence that a god who can work out good 
is with me he's standing with me and he's going to lord fight for my sake uh, the battle belongs to the lord uh, and i will walk only in the goodness of god yes lord the land that you're taking us the promises that you're taking us lord are not going to be what we have experienced so far lord we thank you for the overflow that is coming around lord the turn around that is coming lord the the influence that is coming lord the increase that is coming the greatness that is coming upon the lives of your people the miracles that are going to flow the supernatural that is going to come upon their lives lord we declare from today onwards lord we will not be the same again and we also believe that we are not going back in the same way but we have received the word of god lord the same word which we believe in my mouth which we believe in our heart and the same word which is in our mouth the word of faith which declares that god is good who can say i know my god and you are getting ready to do mighty things i speak lord that this week will be the best week yet for their lives lord they will walk in the goodness surely certainly and this is of the lord and the goodness they will taste and testify we give you all praise glory and honor in jesus name i pray amen 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 <laughs> hallelujah I hope you were blessed by the word today. Be sure to subscribe and share this with your family and friends. If you would like to sow into this ministry, the details are provided in the description. For more information on how to reach us or contact us, do visit our website www.newcityhyd.in. I will see you again next time. Be blessed.